According to the ICH-GCP guidelines, there are four key roles in the clinical trial process. The Ethics Committee representing the regulatory authority. The sponsor initiating and financing the project. The investigator conducts the research. And the monitor responsible for monitoring the clinical trial. Investigator is usually a physician in practice who participates in these studies. He is usually responsible for ensuring that an investigation is conducted according to the signed investigator statement. The investigational plan and applicable regulations, such as protecting the rights, safety, and welfare of subjects under the investigator's care, and for the control of drugs under investigation. The clinical trial investigators could be divided into three main types Principal investigator. The scientist in charge of an experiment or research project. Co-principal investigator and co-investigator. A person who shares the direction and responsibility for a proposed project. Faculty participant. A faculty participant may also be referred to as a faculty investigator or senior personnel and usually participates in clinical trials when they are being conducted in university hospitals. The investigator should be qualified by education, training, and experience to assume responsibility for the proper conduct of the trial. Should meet all the qualifications specified by the applicable regulatory requirements. And should provide evidence of such qualifications through up-to-date curriculum vitae and other relevant documentation requested by the sponsor, the IRB, and the regulatory authorities. The investigator should be thoroughly familiar with the appropriate use of the investigational products, as described in the protocol, in the product information, and in other information sources provided by the sponsor. He or she should be aware of and comply with GCP and the applicable regulatory requirements. The investigator or institution should permit monitoring and auditing by the sponsor and inspection by the appropriate regulatory authorities. The investigator should maintain a list of appropriately qualified persons to whom the investigator has delegated significant trial-related duties. The investigator should be able to demonstrate a potential for recruiting the required number of suitable subjects within the agreed recruitment period. The investigator should have sufficient time to properly conduct and complete the trial within the agreed trial period. The investigator should have available an adequate number of qualified staff and adequate facilities for the foreseen duration of the trial to conduct the trial properly and safely. The investigator should ensure that all persons assisting with the trial are adequately informed about the protocol, the investigational products, and their trial-related duties and functions. The investigator is also responsible for supervising any individual or party to whom the investigator delegates trial-related duties and functions conducted at the trial site. A qualified physician or dentist, who is an investigator or a sub-investigator for the trial, should be responsible for all trial-related medical or dental decisions. During and following a subject's participation in a trial, the investigator and institution should ensure that adequate medical care is provided to a subject for any adverse events, including clinically significant laboratory values, related to the trial. The investigator and institution should inform a subject when medical care is needed for intercurrent illnesses of which the investigator becomes aware. It is recommended that the investigator inform the subject's primary physician about the subject's participation in the trial if the subject has a primary physician and if the subject agrees to the primary physician being informed. Although a subject is not obliged to give his or her reasons for withdrawing prematurely from a trial, the investigator should make a reasonable effort to ascertain the reasons while fully respecting the subject's rights. Before initiating a trial, the investigator and institution should have written and dated approval or favorable opinion from the IRB for the trial protocol, written informed consent form, consent form updates, subject recruitment procedures, such as advertisements, and any other written information to be provided to subjects. As part of the investigator's written application to the IRB, the investigator should provide the IRB with a current copy of the investigator's brochure. If the investigator's brochure is updated during the trial, the investigator should supply a copy of the updated investigator's brochure to the IRB. During the trial the investigator should provide to the IRB all documents subject to review.
The investigator should conduct the trial in compliance with the protocol agreed to by the sponsor and, if required, by the regulatory authorities and which was given approval or favorable opinion by the IRB. The investigator or institution and the sponsor should sign the protocol or an alternative contract to confirm agreement. The investigator should not implement any deviation from or changes of the protocol without agreement by the sponsor and prior review and documented approval or favorable opinion from the IRB of an amendment, except where necessary to eliminate an immediate hazards to trial subjects or when the changes involves only logistical or administrative aspects of the trial, such as change in monitors, change of telephone numbers, and etc. The investigator or person designated by the investigator should document and explain any deviation from the approved protocol. The investigator may implement a deviation from the protocol to eliminate an immediate hazard to trial subjects without prior IRB approval. As soon as possible, the implemented deviation or change, the reasons for it, and the proposed protocol amendments should be submitted to the IRB for review and approval to the sponsor for agreement and to the regulatory authorities. Responsibility for investigational product accountability at the trial sites rests with the investigator or institution. Where allowed or required, the investigator or institution may assign some or all of the investigator's duties for investigational products accountability at the trial sites to an appropriate pharmacist or another appropriate individual who is under the supervision of the investigator or institution. The investigator or institution or a pharmacist or other appropriate individual who is designated by the investigator or institution should maintain records of the product's delivery to the trial site, the inventory at the site, the use by each subject, and the return to the sponsor or alternative disposition of unused products. These records should include dates, quantities, batch or serial numbers, expiration dates, and the unique code numbers assigned to the investigational products and trial subjects. Investigators should maintain records that document adequately that the subjects were provided the doses specified by the protocol and reconcile all investigational products received from the sponsor. The investigational products should be stored as specified by the sponsor and in accordance with applicable regulatory requirements. The investigator should ensure that the investigational products are used only in accordance with the approved protocol. The investigator, or a person designated by the investigator or institution, should explain the correct use of the investigational products to each subject and should check, at intervals appropriate for the trial, that each subject is following the instructions properly. In obtaining and documenting informed consent, the investigator should comply with the applicable regulatory requirements and should adhere to GCP and to the ethical principles that have their origin in the Declaration of Helsinki. Prior to the beginning of the trial, the investigator should have the IRB's written approval of the written informed consent form and any other written information to be provided to subjects. Any revised written informed consent form and written information should receive the IRB's approval in advance of use. The subject or the subject's legally acceptable representative should be informed in a timely manner if new information becomes available that may be relevant to the subject's willingness to continue participation in the trial. The communication of this information should be documented. Neither the investigator nor the trial staff should coerce or unduly influence a subject to participate or to continue to participate in a trial. None of the oral and written information concerning the trial, including the written informed consent form, should contain any language that causes the subject or the subject's legally acceptable representative to waive or to appear to waive any legal rights that releases release the investigator the institution, the sponsor, or their agents from liability for negligence. The language used in the oral and written information about the trial, including the written informed consent form, should be as non-technical as possible and should be understandable to the subject or the subject's legally acceptable representative and the impartial witness, where applicable. Before informed consent may be obtained, the investigator, or a person designated by the investigator, should provide the subject or the subject's legally acceptable representative ample time and opportunity to inquire about details of the trial and to decide whether or not to participate in the trial. All questions about the trial should be answered to the satisfaction of the subject or the subject's legally acceptable representative. Prior to a subject's participation in the trial, 
The written informed consent form should be signed and personally dated by the subject or by the subject's legally acceptable representative and by the person who conducted the informed consent discussion. All serious adverse events or SAEs should be reported immediately to the sponsor except for those SAEs that the protocol or other document, such as the investigator's brochure, identifies as not needing immediate reporting. The immediate report should be followed promptly by detailed, written reports. The investigator should also comply with the applicable regulatory requirements related to the reporting of unexpected serious adverse drug reactions to the regulatory authorities and the IRB. For reported deaths, the investigator should supply the sponsor and the IRB with any additional requested information, such as autopsy reports and terminal medical reports. If the trial is prematurely terminated or suspended for any reason, the investigator or institution should promptly inform the trial subjects, should assure appropriate therapy and follow-up for the subjects, and, were required by the applicable regulatory requirements, should inform the regulatory authorities. If the investigator terminates or suspends a trial without prior agreement of the sponsor, the investigator should inform the institution where applicable, and the investigator or institution should promptly inform the sponsor and the IRB, and should provide the sponsor and the IRB a detailed written explanation of the termination or suspension. If the sponsor terminates or suspends a trial, the investigator should promptly inform the institution where applicable, and the investigator or institution should promptly inform the IRB and provide the IRB a detailed written explanation of the termination or suspension. If the IRB terminates or suspends its approval of a trial, the investigator should inform the institution where applicable, and the investigator or institution should promptly notify the sponsor and provide the sponsor with a detailed written explanation of the termination or suspension. Upon completion of the trial, the investigator should inform the institution, provide the IRB with a summary of the trial's outcome, and provide any report as required by the regulatory authorities. In summary, investigators are responsible for ensuring the investigation is conducted according to the investigational plan, directly responsible for protecting the trial subjects, obtaining the informed consent of human subjects, and controlling the investigational drug.